Priority connection established. This is Master Shipwright Ikro Kotam of the Swords of Sanghelios, contacting the commander of Anvil Station. It has come to our attention that there has been a rise of piracy plaguing our joint occupation zone, as well as noticeable resurgent activity involving the Covenant remnants. Both have been reported to have only recently incorporated powerful vessels. Vessels that once belonged to the Old Covenant. While these are only few occurrences, they are nonetheless a concern to the Arbiter as he fights for our world. In the spirit of honoring our alliance, I've been authorized by the Grand Council of Kaidons to provide technical specifications regarding the former Covenant vessels, as I was stationed on the Ring of Mighty Abundance early on in the war, overseeing the construction of many warships prior to its destruction. No one better understands these ships than I. It is our desire that this exchange will aid our Riftborn warriors and your Spartans in whatever future engagements you send them on. Whether it is against the fleets of the pirates you may encounter, the Covenant Remnants, or those belonging to the Banished in the event of any shipboard boardings. Perhaps then these vermin might know what they can never again roam about our territories with impunity. Now, I believe it would be appropriate to begin with a vessel that served frequently within the Covenant Navy at its prominence. A vessel most familiar amongst your species. A vessel that once darkened the skies of your worlds. The Ket Pattern Battlecruiser, what your military have designated as the CCS Class Battlecruiser. Crafted during the Seventh Age of Reclamation, the Cat Pattern Battlecruiser became a workhorse design that once served in a wide variety of functions for the Covenant fleets. Quickly supplanting the aging Mog and Pattern armored cruisers, these ships were produced in mass quantities throughout the Covenant Empire, from the Anra shipyards in the Urz system, to the assembly forges of High Charity. The Kets were well known for their robust litany of patterns which saw regular modifications alongside that of their sister ship, the Elfin Pattern Battlecruiser. Although Cat and Elephant Patterns dominated all other battlecruiser designs, they had also deeply influenced other cruisers, like those of the weaker Xanar Pattern. In their time of service, they played in many key functions for the naval forces of the Covenant. Their offensive and defensive capabilities, combined with a large troop and equipment complements, made them quite ideal for the deployment of ground forces during planetary campaigns, or serving as middleweight combatants in conjunction of other Covenant ships in space warfare. This distinction differs greatly with the more aggressive executioner vessels, such as the Sonaris Pattern Heavy Destroyer, and large carrier ships such as the Carol Pattern Assault Carrier. As such, the Kets fulfilled many key roles during their War of Annihilation, and were so ubiquitous that their hulls were recognizable to most, filling the skies like a dark blanket of doom. Nearly two kilometers from stern to stern, the standard battlecruiser follows the typical architecture of a Covenant ship, a sleek, amphibious design with sweeping contours and perfect symmetry, reminiscent of those marine life found on Sanghili frontier worlds. With a length of 1,782 meters, a width of 862 meters, and a mass of 90.7 million metric tons, the Cat Pattern Battlecruiser dwarfs most human vessels and are capable of laying them low without any support. Within the ship, various bays consist of engineering, medical, armory, barracks, and religious facilities, all compartmentalized and interconnected by a network of narrow corridors and shifts. Buried deep within the vessel's heart is the command deck, a large room with a centralized bridge platform, occupied mostly by its highest ranking officers, including the commanding shipmaster. At the very height of the Covenant Navy, the cat patterns were typically crewed by eight superiors, two Hurgok engineers, and 500 menials. In addition, these vessels contained a substantial fighting force of over 180 obedientaries, 2,500 warriors, and 4,100 thralls, as well as housing over 55 insertion pods, 10 spirit or phantom dropships, 
50 Banshees, 20 Arshirio Pattern Tick Borders, 44 Rua Pattern Shadow Transports, 32 Seraphs or Keldrick Pattern Tarisk Fighter Craft, 48 Wraith Mortar Tanks, and 150 Ghost Scouts. Cruisers of this design are best recognizable for their distinctive fins, located on the underside of the ship's nose, which in fact operate as sensor arrays. The number of fins can differ between designs depending on the needs of its shipmaster, or even those of the fleet master himself. While specific pattern models can vary, battle cruisers of the cat pattern typically follow a fairly consistent suit of armaments. The largest of the two pinch fusion reactors is located in the ship's core to provide the power needed to operate its peripheral pattern excavation beam and ignis pattern plasma lance. The plasma lance fires a thin beam of superheated plasma, capable of destroying most human vessels effortlessly at long range, as does the excavation beam, though it is also capable of committing plasma bombardments onto a hostile planet's surface. A method your kind would come to call as glassing, rendering worlds sterile and incapable of sustaining life. The pinch reactor is also capable of igniting its serpent's pattern plasma torpedoes. These can be manually guided from the command deck and are known to boil armor and overload the shielding of most craft. Indeed, they were utilized in most first strike operations throughout the war launched by Covenant Warfleets when engaging enemy battle groups at long range. The inert plasma torpedo cores themselves are stocked in the wings of the ship, and can be fired out of the 16 silos located on the top of the ship's ventral surface. 50 Gon pattern pulse laser turrets are equipped on the ship for defensive purposes. They are typically utilized in point defense roles against enemy strike craft and inbound projectile weaponry such as your primitive missiles. However, they can be used in limited anti-ship operations should the need arise, or if the vessel's shipmaster is daring enough to perform such a feat. Being technologically superior to those of humankind, the engines and slipstream drives of Covenant vessels are matched accordingly with their armaments. Cat patterns are run by two Gablian pattern repulsor engines, along with the Ophon pattern borer slipstream core making this battlecruiser pattern a fast and versatile warship in both combat and pursuit operations. These battlecruisers are outfitted with the Corvex pattern dispersal field generator, which provides the ship with energy shielding defenses. The hull is formed of layers of shield-reinforced nanolaminate plating, capable of withstanding the force of nuclear weaponry, or even the MAC cannons of your vessels. Along its undercarriage are four hangar bays off a large circular platform, which can be detached and lowered onto a planet's surface. The ship then generates a vertical gravity beam between the ground and the vessel for surface-to-air conveyance of infantry, supplies, and assets. When attached to the ship, its central gravity platform doubles as the firing port for the excavation beam, so that it may cleanse a surrounding area, leaving all in its wake not but ash and glass. Even before the war began nearly 30 cycles ago, the Kets were in service to the Covenant for centuries, becoming the cornerstone of naval superiority. Since the very beginning, the Covenant's primary mode of intergalactic transportation had always been battlecruisers such as these. Unlike most other Covenant vessels, the battlecruiser served in the role of a fully weaponized warship, with the ability to apply meaningful military deployments. Throughout the war, the battlecruiser had repeatedly proven to be a stalwart and vital element of the Covenant war effort, having given the hegemony of numeric, strategic, and technological advantage. From the fall of Harvest to the Battle of the First Sacred Ring, the Kets had been tested in the crucible of war and emerged victorious at nearly every turn. Yet, as the Ninth Age of Reclamation neared its end, these ships turned on one another as the Great Schism broke out in the shadow of Delta Halo. While your kind will always associate this battlecruiser with horror and dread, it was our fleet of retribution, an armada of eight battlecruisers under the command of Artis Vadim and the Arbiter, that ultimately halted the Covenant's swath of devastation and ended the war high above the skies of the Forerunner Ark. With the fall of the Covenant, many of the Ket patterns have fallen under the control of hundreds of warlords, eager to seize what's left of our glorious empire. 
Yet now, they are but shadows of their former glory. Where hundreds once roamed their hallowed corridors, only skeleton crews remain. And without the assistance of the Hurgok in the wake of their disappearance, many have fallen into disrepair, and ultimately, abandoned. But perhaps the most intriguing ship of this class was a battlecruiser known as the Pious Inquisitor. Violently taken by the Jirohani at the outbreak of the Great Schism, this warship was eventually lost to the Sanghili of the Fleet of Retribution, and was later sent back to Sanghelios to silence those who remained loyal to the Prophets. After the initial conflicts had subsided, the Inquisitor was once again stolen, this time by a cultist group known as the Servants of the Abiding Truth. In a vain attempt to gather strength in order to subvert the Arbiter and the Swords of St. Helios. However, when it was entrusted to a Kigyar crew, it did not take long for it to be sold to the highest bidder, this time to a band of human rebels, who were determined to use the ship against your cradle world, Earth. During a fight to seize the vessel between Kigyar and humans, their shipmistress set an Inquisitor's plasma torpedoes to self destruct an act which ultimately destroyed the vessel. Many other such battlecruisers have fallen into the hands of Kigyar scavengers and independent Sanghili factions. Julum Dama's Ghost of a Covenant chief amongst them. And I've even heard rumors that some flocked under the fleets of the banished as they gather strength in the shadows as we battle lesser foes. Whoever possesses these vessels, be assured, human, that while they may be worn down and understaffed, they in turn possess the strength of their times and the experience of innumerable campaigns conducted in past ages, laying waste to all who are unfortunate to dwell below its dark shadow. So, may my words aid your people should you ever encounter these mighty warships, so that no other may walk the dark path of oblivion. <laughs>